At the start of the 21st century, no one left an imprint on the collective human psyche like Osama bin Laden. The son of a billionaire construction magnate, bin Laden turned his back on the opulent lifestyle of his family and embraced a radical interpretation of Islam that led him to organize attacks against the United States and its allies on almost every continent across the globe. Hello Brewers! Welcome back to another exciting video. In today's video, we will be exploring 12 bizarre things you probably didn't know about Osama bin Laden. Number 12 on our list is Bin Laden chose to hide in plain sight. After September 11, the Bin Laden family spent several years on the run, moving from one sympathetic Pakistani locale to another, including the frontier city of Peshawar in the rural Swat Valley, among others. When his supporters decided it was time for the family to settle, they chose Abbot Abbot, which Bin Laden had visited and liked. In 2004, his trusted confidant Ibrahim Saeed Ahmed paid a total of $48,000 to acquire a handful of adjoining small lots that together comprised roughly an acre in a soggy field just northeast of Abbottabad city center. According to authors Adrian Levy and Catherine Scott Clark in their 2017 book The Exile, the flight of Osama bin Laden, the man, calling himself Mohammed Arshad, claimed he was buying the land for an uncle fleeing a blood feud. Number 11. He had the compound custom-built. Arshad hired a local architectural firm to draw up plans for a large, two-story building on the premises, with very specific criteria. On the ground floor, the new villa was designed with four bedrooms and three bathrooms, as well as a kitchen. The second floor had another four bedrooms and four bathrooms. A third floor was added later, Wright Levy and Scott Clark, it would become Ben Layton's living area, with a bedroom, study and tiny bathroom and kitchen. The new home's size was unusual, as was its relative lack of windows. But the features that astonished locals were its walls. Arshad instructed a local builder to construct a 7-foot high wall around one of the buildings, and then a thick, 18-foot high wall around the entire compound, topped by razor wire. This puzzled the builder, both because the Bilal town neighborhood was safe and peaceful, and because it was significantly higher than the architect's plans called for. Arshad warned him that if he asked more questions, he would be fired. Customization went as far as applying an anti-snooping film on the upper floor windows. Number 10. It's not known how many people lived with Bin Laden. The compound came to be known to locals as the Waziristan Haveli, or Waziristan House slash mansion, due to the Wazari accents of Arshad and his brother, Ibrahim. Both men, Al-Qaeda stalwarts who would serve as Bin Laden's primary couriers, caretakers, aides, and buffers to the outside world, moved in first, together with their families. By the end of 2005, Bin Laden and at least three of his wives and several younger children, had arrived and been installed. Older Bin Laden children and their spouses and children would come and go over the next half dozen years. Number 9. Bin Laden and his family lived in extreme isolation and self-sufficiency. Life in the Abbot Abbot hideout was designed to be as self-contained and self-sufficient as possible, to minimize contact with the outside world. The compound lacked telephone or internet service, too easy to track, but did have satellite dishes allowing residents to watch the old TVs later found there. The residents burned their garbage rather than putting it out for collection. Bin Laden's son Hali did much of the maintenance, and the compound had chickens, goats, rabbits, honeybees, cows and kitchen gardens. Bin Laden's grandchildren, who he schooled himself, competed in vegetable gardening competitions for small prizes he awarded. Number 8. Bin Laden kept confined to a small space. Two of the rooms on the upper floors became Bin Laden's media center. On the back of a door, he hung the thobe, an Arab man's robe, he donned when filming videos to be distributed to followers. A snub-nosed Kalashnikov, a memento from his days fighting Russian invaders in Afghanistan, rested on a shelf above the door. Yellow flowered curtains screened the room from curious eyes, and the walls were filled with hundreds of tapes, audio and video, carefully organized in rows. Bin Laden devoted hours each day to monitoring the news of conflict in both Iraq and Afghanistan, 
disturbed only by the racket made by the compound small children. Eventually he rebelled against indoor confinement, sending his son Khalid to buy him a hat with a wide brim, like a cowboy hat, that would mask his features if he went outside late in the day. Khalid also oversaw the construction of a gazebo and trellises that would prevent a satellite from obtaining a clear image of his face or physique. Number 7. Bin Laden used tricks to evade local authorities. The Al Kuwaiti brothers disguised how many people lived in the compound by ensuring that no fewer than four separate electric meters were installed. Still, a Pakistani board of inquiry, whose report was later obtained by Al Jazeera, concluded that Bin Laden was extremely fortunate to not run into anyone committed to doing his job honestly, or there was a complete collapse of local governance. The local authority sold the first plots of land without verifying the buyer's identity, and no one followed up on the construction of a third-story addition without a building permit. Number 6. Bin Laden's Couriers Wanted Out Even as the Americans prepared to launch their attack on the compound, relationships were breaking down inside its walls. Exhausted by meeting the needs of a fluctuating but steadily expanding number of confined Bin Laden family members and those of their own growing families, the Al-Kuwaiti brothers gave the Al-Qaeda chief an ultimatum. They would start looking for loyalists to replace them in their roles as secretary-slash-caretaker-slash-courier-slash-liaison with the outer world, and Osama would agree not to add a fourth wife to the menage or otherwise increase the number of those the brothers were responsible for. Before the conflict was fully resolved and a new routine established, SEAL Team 6 arrived by helicopter the night of May 2, 2011, and Osama, the Al-Kuwaiti brothers and some of their family members were dead. Number 5. Bin Laden was austere, with Western touches. Despite his apparent hatred for America, that didn't seem to have stopped Bin Laden from enjoying its movies. He reportedly had copies of films like Ants, Cars, Heroes of Tomorrow, Chicken Little, and Resident Evil. Aside from that last name, it's possible there were kids at the compound watching the animated movies, possibly even his own children. Then again, maybe the gun-toting Bin Laden just had a penchant for Disney and Pixar animated flicks. Number 4. Anime was found in his computer. Osama Bin Laden also apparently had a few anime episodes on hand, both of the entertainment and the pornographic kind. One example was an episode of Detective Conan, downloaded from a popular Arabic-language anime forum with fan translations available. We can exactly be sure but, Given that it was episode number 534, it's possible Bin Laden, or someone else with access to his computer, was very invested in the show. Number 3. Loads of porn was also found on his computer. Aside from the erotic anime on storage, also called hentai, Bin Laden also had a folder full of emulator, software that lets you play old console games on your PC, cover art from old games. The strange thing was, Quite a few of them were the non-PG-13 kind, awash with screenshots of nude women, as well as pixel art of semi-nude female characters. There are just no words anymore. Number 2. No physical evidence of Osama bin Laden's death was released. The U.S. government took political, religious, and practical factors into consideration when choosing how to bury bin Laden's body. It is said there was suspicion that if he was buried on land, his grave could become a shrine for his followers. There was a need to observe Islamic funeral practices, including the custom of burying a body within 24 hours of a person's death. And there was the question of whether the U.S. should take photos or provide some sort of visual proof that he was dead. To avoid bin Laden's grave becoming an important symbol to his followers, the U.S. made the decision to bury him at sea. Although this deviates from the way most Muslim burials occur, U.S. officials insisted it still took steps to bury him according to Islamic traditions. Number 1. Bin Laden cost the United States at least $3 trillion over 15 years. By careful estimates, Bin Laden cost the United States at least $3 trillion over 15 years, counting the disturbances he brought on the domestic economy, the wars and worsened security triggered by the terrorist attacks he engineered, and the direct actions to hunt him down. How? Two wars that continue to occupy 150,000 troops and tie up a quarter of our defense budget, 
a bloated homeland security apparatus that has at times pushed the bounds of civil liberty. Soaring oil prices partially are attributable to the global war on bin Laden's terrorist network and a chunk of the U.S. mounting national debt, which threatened to hobble the economy. We hope you've learned some interesting bizarre facts about Osama bin Laden from this video. Don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.